Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek of I Am Penjo, and welcome to Godhood, which is a game all about creating your own religion, which sounds very interesting indeed. So we're going to create a very geek cupidy religion, and we're going to try and make all the people of the in-game world, they're sort of like tribes, they're kind of like groups of tribes people, we're going to get all the people in those tribes to believe in our religion at the expense of all the other gods who are trying to do the same, which just sounds very exciting, I like the idea of that. So we've got to create a religion. We've got to set things that are virtuous, or the things that we like, and the things that are naughty. So naughty vices are you know, going to get you in trouble. We're going to get worshippers, we're going to get disciples, and we need to try to show everyone that our religion is the way to go. Our religion is the way forward. Forget those other ones, come over to our religion please. And it just sounds like an interesting concept for a game, so I thought we'd check it out. So as you can see on the screen there, this is the early access release version of the game. I think it went into early access on Steam just over a week ago, but if you're interested, there's a link to the Steam store page in the video description below. But because it's early access, we know the drill by now. Things might not be quite right, we might see a few bugs and a few glitches and a few incomplete things here and there. We know the drill with early access, we've kind of got it by now. So I think let's just crack on, shall we? Let's start a new game of Godhood and have a little go and see what kind of lovely religion we can make. Okay, so we have to create our religion, or our sort of certainly initial kind of aspects of our religion, right here, right now. And the uh, one it's given us, I assume it's random each time, is kind of uh, what an angry kind of red eagle or something, but with legs and, a, and an absolutely massive sword. That is ridiculous. <laughs> that is that is way too vast. How could you hold that? I suppose uh, yeah, he is a god and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we get to pick what we're called, what the religion is, and what the worshippers are called. Uh, randomise. Hang on, can we randomise that? Oh! Oh, right, okay, yes, it completely changes it every time. Oh, that's very odd there. Okay, what's going on there? It's a weird sort of Cthulhu-faced thing with a twig arm smoking a pipe. Right you are. Oh, oh, that's quite pretty. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's quite nice. Oh, there's all sorts of crazy things. Okay, right, so we'll customise that. How do you want to be addressed? Goddess, God, or neither? And what is your style? Neutral, dark, or light? And what shall be our colours? Okay, let's get customising. So, our colours. There's only one dot that looks like the background colour to me. So, how about... How about we choose a nice sort of... Uh, well, that's a bit boring, isn't it? I was hoping it would be a bit more vibrant. Okay, no, that's dull. Let's pick a nice... Oh, no, vibrant. Come on, orange is exciting. All the colours are a bit dark. They're all a slightly sort of uh, sort of muted palette of colours here. Oh, that'll have to do, sort of a mustard colour. Okay, now, can we customise that? Ah, ha, ha, right, okay, here we go. Now, I've not played this, I've not played any of this before, so I don't really know how this is going to work. I assume this is all cosmetic, and that's just how we refer to. I guess this bit here might have a bearing. So, neutral, dark, and light. Oh, by the way, we're going to be uh, addressed as uh, nothingness because I'm going to be a god, so I'm going to be neither a goddess or a god, I'm just going to be a neither, and we're going to be of the light style, because neutral, nah, who wants to be that, I might as well do it properly, dark, that's not befitting what I want to do with this playthrough, we're going to go for light, because we're going to be nice, we're going to be a nice, lovely religion, we're all going to be happy, and smiley, and inclusive, and of course we're going to be drinking a lot of tea, obviously, I mean that guy there, that pose would look great if he had a cup in his hand, because, you know, he's got, he's got his little sort of finger extended, <laughs> like he's drinking from a little fine china cup. So that looks pretty good. So we've got wings. So we don't, ah, we don't have to have wings. Okay, let's set everything back to the start. Oh my goodness me. Right, so you can just create a blind, horse-headed, armless thing. Okay, fine. So let's start with... Oh, goodness me, we could be here all day. So arms, right, tentacles, no. Big arms, no. I want something that looks sort of nice. I'm, I'm being all nice and calm. I mean, that's a bit crazy. Um, oh, that's quite good. That's a green drop. That could be tea. That could be tea. We've got some colours along here as well. We'll change the colours later, maybe. Hang on, what do the colours represent? Can we have sort of geek cupboardy colours? Ah, right, okay, that's incidental stuff. We'll have dark blue. Right, what colour's that one? Can we have light blue? That doesn't seem to do anything at all. Can we have light blue there? Yes, that's much better. Okay, we'll change that to orange or something, so when something appears we do know what it is. And green, this is for the clothing, so let's have yellow. That's much better. They're geek company colours, the blue and the yellow. Okay, so wings. Ah, and that's where the red comes in. Okay. Um, do we need wings? Oh, they're quite nice. Oh, I like those. There we go. <laughs> right, a hat. This is very important. That is a ridiculous hat. That is also a ridiculous hat. These hats are amazing. It's a hat that looks like a fish wedged on your head. This is the best thing. Um, I quite like that. 
I quite like that. It's very extravagant. Right, eyes, they might be useful. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> that looks like you've seen something you preferred not to have seen. Okay, let's go for... Uh, well, that looks quite... I like that. Because you're, you're sipping your tea and you're enjoying it at that moment in time. And then a body. I mean, that one's all right. Um, I mean, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I like that. That is excellent. That's that's the body of a, of a tea and cake fan right there. Tea, cake and biscuits. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yeah, let's go for that. Absolutely. And then head. Okay, so currently we've got kind of like a sort of a, well, like a cattle sort of head. So we could have... Hang on, let's move the hat out of the way. Move out the way, hat. Um, so you can have a normal, uh, a sort of a fox head. That's like a human head. A sort of squiddy head. Um, a bird head. An angry cat head. A massive dinosaur head. Whatever that is, head. Another weird thing, head. A skeleton. That's a bit scary. That's if you want to be evil, I assume. Um, or sort of the... I can't, do you know what? I'm, I'm all for going for that. I'm all for going for that with, with the crazy hat. Yeah, I quite like that. I like this idea. This is just all sorts of bonkers. And then um, wings. Yeah, those wings seem to be pretty good, actually. Well, that, no, I quite like those. I quite like those. Yeah, the other ones seem a little bit evil. How about those ones? Yeah, they're good. Now, do we want that as that colour or do we want it to be something else? Let's fiddle about with the colours for a bit for no real reason. <laughs> it's just all entirely trivial. Oh, I quite like that. I'll have that, I think. Or do we want to go for a slightly darker blue? Um, yeah, that's a bit boring, isn't it? Yeah, let's go, let's go back, let's go back to a purple, maybe. Let's go for that. That'll do. I quite like that. Okay, so now I just need to figure out the names. So let's pick the names and just see what we're going to be called, what the religion is, and what the worshippers are going to be called. So, our god is going to be called the Endless Teapods, our religion is obviously going to be called Lovely Tea, and the worshippers are going to be called Brewers. So this little bit of example text down here kind of puts it into context. So the Brewers worship the Endless Teapot, god of Lovely Tea, with a simple fervour, <laughs> which I do like. I like the idea of an Endless Teapot, that pleases me immensely. So I think we're just about ready to go. I have tweaked the background colour to be a darker colour. It was this yellowy colour and it was all getting a a bit sort of lost the uh, clothing and the wings were getting lost with the background so I've changed it to that color because you know maybe that's the color of tea when it's made if you have really really strong tea that's the color of tea so I think now we're ready to go so let it be known that the endless teapot is here to help the brewers achieve their goal of supporting the religion of the lovely tea here we go let it be known thus for as long as there have been people to believe there have been gods to vie for their attention, the Endless Teapot is one such god, destined to claim their place in humanity's hearts and minds. They would start with a single soul, destined to become the first prophet of lovely tea. Oh, can it be me? Please let it be me. <laughs> I am the Endless Teapot. From nothing, the Endless Teapot appeared before Adarian. Oh, so Adarian or Adarian? I'm going to say Adarian is our first sort of follower. Lovely. Adarian renounced their faith in the old god, Quetzalcoatl, and placed it in the Endless Teapot instead. First, the Endless Teapot taught Adarian about what is right. In my name you will spread what is right. Oh, we get to pick our different things now. So we can be either a god of war. So might is right. Your followers prove their faith through blood and victory. And you're not allowed to do peace. Okay, that makes sense. Peace is going to be sort of the opposite, I guess. We must strive for a mutual understanding. Your holy sight becomes a beacon of reason and debate. Okay, so you're not allowed to pick war. A war is a vice. Chastity. Purity starts with a clean body and mind. Your worshippers purge their sin through cleansing and abstinence. Or lust. Indulge in worldly pleasures. Cries of passion, love and gratification will fill your temple site. Oh my goodness me. Well, I don't think war is going to be for us. I, I don't like the idea of the people of the uh, the Endless Teapot doing a war. Uh, chastity. I don't think so. I mean, I'm, I'm tempted to go for peace. A beacon of reason and debate. I like the idea of everybody debating stuff and being very reasonable about tea. I mean, lust, if you could say it was just lustful for the tea, then yeah, that would be quite good. Cries of passion, love and gratification. However, that's not very uh, very becoming, is it? That's all a little bit naughty. So let's go for peace, shall we? Let's go for peace. That can be a virtue. War is going to become a vice. So we're not going to like doing war very much. Okay, that's fine. I'm all for that. The elders who worship the ancestors considered this idea to be dangerous. This will only lead to destruction and agony. They could not see how they were wrong in opposing the endless teapot. 
Who dares oppose the endless teapot? Come on. A sacrament was called to determine who is right. Okay, prepare for the sacrament. Uh, ooh, right, it looks like we have to do something. Oh, there's a Darian, look. There's a Darian, so he he's looking a little bit beaten up already. 13 out of 40. Be reflective like nature, says the stubborn elder. Well, there's three stubborn elders, so you're going to entangle us. Haha, -ha, Darian has dodged. Oh, Adarian's been punched right in the kisser. Oh my goodness me, Adarian has taken a bit of a kicking there. Um, convert. Okay, right. I assume that this is just all done for us. I'm going to guess. I I'll put money on the fact that we're going to lose because we're on five out of 40 and there's three of them and they're all going to beat us up. Yes, here we go. Are you going to... Yeah, there we go. Adarian is down. And also, I couldn't control anything there. So I'm going to assume... Oh, Adarian's got an amazing beard. Good job, Adarian. Um, I'm going to assume that uh, yeah, that was sort of a preordained thing that we were going to lose because I couldn't actually control him then. But yeah, look, we've got a little band of followers. There's quite a lot of those guys, though. There's more of those than us at the moment. Your disciples grow more experienced. Adarian and his amazing beard. Oh, and look, this is lovely. Look at the things in his hair. That is brilliant as well. Okay, so yes, proceed. The elders were resolute in their judgment. Adarian and a few followers were banished from the old city. Before leaving, Adarian prophesied that one day the endless teapot would come back and conquer the old city. One day we will return and we shall bring you Yorkshire gold and you shall enjoy it. Okay. Adarian continued to travel for days with the exiled. The people were growing tired and hopeless. Finally, on a fertile and lush terrace, the Endless Teapot spoke again. Hello, put the kettle on. This shall be the Endless Teapot's holy site. A new religion is founded. Okay. So we get ourselves a little site. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, that's very nice. We've got some little sort of huts. It's lovely. Some trees. And yeah, the art style, it looks gorgeous to look at. Look at it. It's all very lovely. It's all nicely drawn. So there's a Darien down there. Um, okay, what do we do? Do we click on you, Adarian? There's an ominous thing down here. Choose a disciple to perform a ritual. Ah, okay. The higher the disciple's faith, the better their performance. Okay, so we click this. We've only got Adarian to choose from. So select a disciple. We'll pick Adarian in his amazing sort of hat and beard. We'll pick you. Um, select a building to inspire Adarian. Okay, well, we've only got the campfire at the moment by the look of it, because there's a campfire just there. Unless it's going to go and get inspired by a tree or a sort of shack. I suspect we need to pick this. So it adds proselytizer plus 10 faith for eight days. Increases faith a bit. <laughs> I like that. I like the sort of the slightly sort of uh, vague thing there. Increases faith a bit. I don't know. Uh, adds one or two brewers. Ah, this will give us some, some followers. Oh, okay. Yeah, go and do that. So you're going to go and... The Age of Darkness. Okay, you're going to go and do some worshipping around the campfire. And in come some people. Okay, this is good. So in come all the little people. Oh, now I can zoom in and out. Yes, I couldn't move before. But now I can have a little look around. Oh, we're in a very big place. Oh, we're in a huge place. Hang on, are we on our own? Are we on our own? Or is there somebody else lurking around? What's that in the tree? It looks like berries and birds and everything. This is brilliant. Okay, yeah, it looks like we're on our own. Unless we have to go to the south. In which case there might be stuff down there. But okay, so up here... It's all looking good. Now, I've noticed there's no tutorial on here, so I don't know entirely what to do right now. I'm just sort of hoping that something will pop up and tell us what to do. But there's lots of people wandering about, and they all look peaceful. You guys, you good spears, put them down. Put them down. Pick up a, a little cup and have some tea, would you, for goodness sake? Um, is this going up? Your religion level is level one. Personal belief. A budding belief shared among many, uh, among, sorry, many, among several individualists. Attract 20 brewers by winning more sacraments to become a first gathering. Ah, okay. So I need 20 brewers. How many brewers do I have? Uh, can I find that out? I've got seven out of 20. This is your worshipper support. Each disciple requires a certain amount depending on their talent. Okay, hang on a minute. Can we do that? There are no disciples that can be inspired. Okay, right. I'm not entirely sure what we do right now. Do we just move time on? Maybe we just press that and move time on. And stuff has happened. And things are going on. Okay, a new dawn. Okay, lovely. By praying at the holy site centre, Darwin's faith in the endless teapot grew. The more faith a disciple has, the better they serve. Two disciples in awe of this prayer pledged themselves to the lovely tea. They were young Kipak and Montezuma. Okay, so this seems to be like, you know, in sort of the Aztec kind of area, because we announced the god of 
Quetzalcoatl or whatever it was. And now our people are called Kipak and Montezuma. Okay. Although they are devoted, they could do with more faith. Okay, how do we do that then? A Darian preached to the new disciples. We must travel far and wide and prove the endless teapot's greatness in the holy sacraments. Victory in the sacrament will convert new brewers. With more brewers, the endless teapot will grow more powerful. Go, my disciples, win sacraments and convert new brewers. Ah, gain God action, world map. View the world map to organise a mission and engage other tribes. Ah ha ha, the world map is here. Oh, so that's our little bit of the world. Um, what's that? That's got a skull. That's That's got to be a bad thing, right? A songsmith of five. Uh, what's that? Collect ten brewers. Or up here, what's this What's this line? What's the line? Uh, conversion rewards is ten brewers. Conversion rewards... Oh, that's the old city. That's where we're going to go back to one day and reclaim it. But right now, no. Okay, well, let's go over here then to the place with the ominous skulls. Let's go over here and we'll pick uh, you and Kipak and Montezuma, because we have no other people to choose. Um, and our mission is to collect 10 brewers. Okay, let's start the mission. We're guided by the virtue of peace. So we inflict more damage on kind abilities. I mean, there's a certain level of irony there, but okay, can we not go and sort of debate things rather than go and whack each other with sticks? Um, what are you guys then? Are you guys, are you all, are you all godless? Are you just like heathens? You're, oh, okay, fine. Oh yeah, absolutely. We'll go and show these guys what's what. Uh, maybe. Uh, okay, I don't really know what I'm doing now. Do I need to do anything? We go first. So do I do something now? Oh no, these things get spun. Convert, nervous, and attack. Oh no, Kipak's freaked out. Kipak, Kipak is down. Kipak is down. He freaked out. Okay, they just get random sort of goes each time. Condemn, simple song, and attack. <gasps> Adarian got in the way. He's defending Kipak. Oh well. Oh, this is this is the best thing. Go us. That was very peaceful. Right. Oh, Kipak freaked out again. He's too nervous. However, one more hit and they're gone. Yes. So we took them down. We took eight, whatever, damage. But we have persuaded these guys to join. Oh, look at look at this guy. Is that is that whatever it's called? Uh, Kipak. Yeah, Kipak, who completely freaked out during that. You look completely confident and cocky there, but you did nothing. You just sat and was nervous in the middle. Okay. We unlock a class. Okay. Let's press unlock class and see what this is doing. Um, crikey. Okay. Uh, I don't know what this all means, but let's, let's see if we can work it out. So we've got an ambassador. An ambassador. Do we get to pick different things? Kipak can be... Uh, Kipak can be... Oh, hang on. Hang on. Kipak's a lady. Is Kipak a lady? Oh, I thought Kipak was a bloke on that picture there. He looked very much square of jaw on that picture. But okay, maybe Kipak is a lady then, possibly. So we can be an ambassador, a druid, a smite sword. Okay, they're quite fighty. A weaver. Oh my goodness me, there's loads of things. A chieftain, a songsmith, a beast walker, a zealot, a guardian. Or oh, a guardian sounds like the kind of thing we might want to do. That sounds quite good. However, we do have quite a good devotion score. Which one of these needs good devotion? Um, charisma and devotion for an ambassador. The ambassador represents the ancestral tradition of peace that should govern over all life. And tea, of course. The ambassador excels when sacraments take longer. Ambassadors have boost and healing abilities that strengthen your argument for peace and can finish with devastating finales. <laughs> Accept my peace. I'm going to punch you in the face. Accept peace, all right? For goodness sake. Um, so dove totem. So yeah, all these are the things. So the favoured ones are an ambassador a druid and a smite sword. Okay, but he has good charisma and devotion and that seems to use those. That's quite good. So lovely tea is peace. So these are the abilities he gets, I assume. Uh, do you know what? Yeah, let's go for that, shall we? What's customize? What's customize? Oh, we can customize Kipak. Now, now that Kipak looks like a bloke again there, that's not Kipak just there. That's just a generic representation. Okay, do you know what, Kipak? We're going to keep you as you are. Absolutely. You are absolutely fine, Kipak. You look like a square-jawed hero. So you can be our ambassador. So we'll pick that. You have become an ambassador. Right, Montezuma, you have amazing hair, Montezuma. Yeah, you've got really enormous hair. What are you good at? Uh, you're good at devotion and quite a few other things as well. Okay, what's a guardian? They seem like a good thing to be. Hang on, what was that? That didn't come up on the other one, did it? A rage prophet? They sound terrifying. Uh, where was the... What was that one again? A guardian. Charisma and cunning. You're quite good at both of those. The songsmith channels your power through music. 
Their songs often affect multiple targets. They're good in keeping morale high and inspiring other disciples to greatness. Oh, yes, this is brilliant. Or whatever you are, a guardian. The Guardian is a vigilant defender of the people. They excel versus physical damage and often block physical attacks to protect their allies. Their offensive capabilities are limited. Oh! Oh, right. Oh, we've already got two ambassadors now. Maybe I shouldn't have picked an ambassador. I didn't see that a Darian was an ambassador, but never mind. That's okay. So we can either pick a druid for knowledge and devotion. Uh, they see you in nature, balance and nurturing. They are defensive and supportive. They're especially apt in dealing with incoming morale damage. Do you know what? A druid would be good because, look, the marvel of growth, we need to grow our tea. So let's pick a druid for Montezuma. Montezuma can be a druid. Okay, and now what happens? Do we go back and we've got some people? Your disciples have overcome the obstacles before them. They return home victorious. So we've got 32 out of 40 people. So 32 out of 40 people in that little place are coming to us, are they? Yay! In their sacrament victory, some disciples gained a miracle charge. Yes, I know, we just sort of sorted that out. However, miracles cannot occur just anywhere. Your disciples want to construct a new holy place important to the faith where they could enact a miracle. I will erect an important place where miracles are performed. So we can construct a miracle building. Can we construct two miracle buildings? It seems to imply just there, but okay. Uh, right, where's my god powers then? How do I do that? Yes, there, look. Construct Miracle Building. I can construct two of them, it seems. Okay, fine. Well, let's click this one. <gasps> Look at these. Oh, this is brilliant. We've got all different things. A Herder's Hut. St are these... Oh, this is lovely. Right, hang on. I need to look through all these. Oh, this uh, farmland sounds quite good, though. Farmland sounds quite good because, you know, farms grow crops and crops are tea. So maybe that's what we need. Um, let me have a look through all these and just see if I can figure out what exactly is going on with these. Okay, I think the first thing we're going to put down is a tavern. So it says here, perform a tavern miracle. The tavern miracle raises health and devotion, increasing the disciples' defences. Outdrink others, gaining health and devotion. Of course, we're going to be serving tea in our tavern. So let's get ourselves a little tavern um, that we place somewhere there. Cannot place building there. Where can we place the tavern? I don't understand. Where can we put the tavern? On there. Cannot place the building there. Are we supposed to... Oh! Oh, it's a whole big... Oh, crikey. Okay, let's put the tavern just there then. Oh, and the tavern has magically appeared. Out of nothing. Oh, yes, we've got ourselves a tavern. So now we can get people to go into the tavern. It doesn't look much like a tavern, I'll be honest. But, you know, it's fine. It's very pretty and colourful. And then we need to do our second building. Okay, I've had a look through our folks' abilities. So Adarian, Kipak and Montezuma have these attacks here. But they don't do physical damage. They deal morale damage, which I quite like. Because obviously we're all peace-loving. So we're clearly going to start dealing some morale damage. So rather than going up and whacking someone with a sword, we're just going to talk to them. So yeah, that's a peace offer. This is converting. We're doing it all peacefully. They've just got peace offers. You've got spells. They deal nature morale damage. So it's all to do with wearing people down mentally, trying to you know, tell them the, the air of their ways and make them come over to our way. So I think there is a building that can help with morale damage, and that is the Storytelling Circle. The Miracle Myth mostly raises charisma, which increases morale damage. So I think let's take that. Given that all our people are going to be doing morale damage, we might as well take this. That's better than something like Farmlands, where it says the Farm Miracle raises might, making the disciple deal more physical damage. We don't deal any physical damage at all, so that'd be pointless. Let's go for the storytelling circle, and let's put that down at the bottom just here. Let's place that just there, and it's just a little, oh, it's just a little area with some sort of rugs, some lovely brightly coloured rugs and a stone thing. They've all got those stone things. I assume that comes in important at some point. But here we go. Look, some people are going to go for a little drink, enjoy the tea. Some people are coming down here. Oh, no, no one's coming down here. Come down here. There's a story to tell. It's about tea. Um, and we can perform someone to do a ritual. Um, why don't we get Montezuma? You're recovering from the last trial. Oh, okay. Why don't we get Kipak to do one then? Kipak, you go and do some stuff. Go and sit around here and do some sort of worshipy stuff. And then maybe people will come over to you. That's fun. Um, and then inspire a miracle. Choose a disciple with a miracle charge for miracle ritual. It costs offerings. Now, we have an offerings value in the top left. We have 50 offerings. So let's go to here and we'll pick our top. Oh, we can't pick our top guy. We can't pick Montezuma either. Why can't we pick a Darian? Oh, okay. Maybe I shouldn't have possibly done that with that person. And I can't pick Montezuma. Oh, I can pick Montezuma. 
Oh, I'm very confused. Okay, let's increase Montezuma's. Let's let's go down go down here and get him to tell a story. So let's go and increase Montezuma's charisma. There we go. Montezuma can come down here. Gather round, everybody. He can tell a little tale at the storytelling circle. There we go. He look. He sat down. This is great. I love the art. The artwork's brilliant. He's telling a story of a door. It's all very exciting. More people are coming in. Different story, maybe. Oh, you're replying back with about a bowl. It's it's all very exciting here. I can't see what that is, but okay. Um, and now we do this again. Oh, okay. Let's get you to also go around the fireplace. Okay. And what's that? That's the world map. So now we have to go out and do some more of this, do we? So we've converted all those folks. What about going down here? What about going down here? We didn't get any rewards for converting you. What if we go over here? Do we get any rewards? Your disciple blesses a relic. You collect 10 brewers. But what if we get these guys down here? Why are they there? Why are they there? The unguided team. Do you know what? Let's go and have a little fight with them, shall we? A little, not a fight, a, a debate. Um, I can't, oh, you're recovering still. You're too tired or hurt. We've got a five and a nine and a four. Yeah, we should be okay. I think we'll be okay. Oh, I can't do it. I have to pick three. Oh, okay. We'll just, we'll go back to the city and we'll wait then. Because we can just do that so we can move time on. So I assume we can just move time on until Kipak is uh, ready. No, not Kipak. Montezuma's ready again. Montezuma told an amazing story of the endless teapot's exploits to some brewers. The story was so well told that it came alive in a nearby fire. In awe, the listeners learned about the endless teapot while Montezuma was too enraptured to notice the miracle. All stories about me are true. At Miracle Myth, the disciples performed miracles. Okay, so Montezuma has performed a miracle myth. Okay, what does that do? We get a chance of learning some new abilities. Oh, a new ability. Wisdom. Deal nature morale damage. Also raises morale armor and raises chance to block morale attacks. Oh, blessed be Montezuma. Okay, now, can we do those things again? Or do we want to go and do a world map thing? Can we go down here now? You're still recovering. Recover quicker. Recover more, please. <laughs> I need you to go out and do some converting of people. That would be better. Um, how long until you're not recovering? Can we work that out? How do we know when you're going to recover? Oh, Kipak is miracle charged. Inspire Kipak to do a miracle by using the God action in the Holy City. Okay, well, let's do this then. Let's get you, Kipak, to do this one up here. You can go to the pub, but you can increase your health and devotion. Why wouldn't you want to do that? So you wander up here and go to the pub. <laughs> Lovely. Go to the tavern. Have a nice pot of infinite tea. Lovely. Um, and then, yeah, we've got that again. So do we do that with you? Just perform a ritual? Yeah, you go and do that then. And uh, you can do that thing. And then you can do that thing as well. You can just all go around the campfire. I'm not entirely sure what this does, but I'm sure it's a good thing. I'm sure it's a useful thing and we want it to happen. Right, okay. Move time on then. So we're going to shuffle time forward a little bit. And then, right, what's happening now? This is the tavern miracle. Kipak roared to the tavern. In the endless teapot name, I challenge you all to drink agave booze. No, no, <clears throat> tea flowed generously that night, but it was Kipak alone who tumbled triumphantly out of the tavern. <laughs> so full of tannin and caffeine that he was just, didn't know what was going on. The rest of the brewers, while in awe of Kipak, couldn't stand up for another day or two. Uh, that's what happens when you have too much tea. That's what happens when you have too much tea. Um, okay, Kipak has my resilience. Okay, so this gets him a miracle. And do we get a new ability? We get, ah, the, the uh, peace offer, which is what Adarian has. Marvellous. So he's got a different thing now. Okay, that's good. Blessed be. Now we can go to the world map and go down here because you're all ready. Okay, right. Move you all over. Let's go and have a little sort of uh, a little battle with these guys. So we are better than them. So we should be okay. So let's go and start a mission over here and we'll see if we win. And now it's just random. So this thing is going to flick by and they're going to get one of their five abilities. And I think it's just a random thing each time. Be reflective like nature, says Montezuma. Okay, brilliant. So you've got some sort of defense. So we're going to try two converts and then a spell. Okay, we all go for the same person. Pow. Oh my goodness me, they're on 7 out of 30 already. Attack, force and attack. Yeah, you guys are brutes. Oh, you're picking on Kipak. That's just cruel. Poor Kipak. Right, you guys are going down. You're going down. Uh, buy it. Uh, uh, fulfill my peace. There we go. 
<laughs> peace be with you. I, I, I mean, I do just bash you in the face, but peace be with you. Oh, and a Darian can do a miracle. Okay, proceed back to base. What have we got? Your disciples have overcome the obstacles before they return home victorious with no converts at all. Marvellous. Well, wasn't that worth doing then? <laughs> Here we go. They can all come in. Kipak is a little bit battered and bruised. I apologise, Kipak. Now, we have no offerings. We need to get some more offerings. Is that what this gets us? Does this get us more offerings? It increases faith a bit. Um, okay. Do we want to do that for a while? Adds one to two brewers. We might as well just do that a lot for everybody. Yeah, you just do that. Everybody do this thing. Just do some just do some of this. There we go. Just do some worshipping. Um, we can't go and do another thing yet because Kipak is injured, so we'll just move time on until he is okay. I can't do the, the uh, I can't do the miracle thing. Because we haven't got any of these offering points left. So I assume we might get those when we go and do our next duel or whatever. But, um, oh, hang on. Rewards for level two. Ah, maybe we get offerings for reaching level two. Okay, right. We need everybody healed. So Kipak, heal up. Oh, we're panning up. We've panned up into the sky. <gasps> We've gone to level two. As the brewers flock together, lovely tea grew into a first gathering. We've got 41 brewers. So now we've got some new god actions. We can inspire some offerings or we can stockpile. Or that inspire offering stockpile. Is that the same thing? And uh, worshipper support has increased to 22. I assume that's a good thing. So, yay. Right, back down we go to the land. Oh, yes. In order to collect the required offerings, you require, required, require, your disciples wish to build an offering stockpile. Disciples could be inspired to lead the gathering of offerings here. These offerings will prove useful for miracles. I would say essential for miracles. Okay, so now we can build an offerings stockpile. Um, let's pop that there. Why not? Let's just put it just there. So that's our little offering stockpile. And now, can we go... Oh, no, we can't do a miracle. But does that mean people are going to go over to the offering stockpile and give us some stuff? Ah, here, yes. So collect 10 to 15 offerings. And you can go and do the same. And that means next turn we'll have maybe... Oh, well, let's get all three of them to do it. Hadarian, you go and do some offerings as well. You trot off and do that, please. Okay, so then we'll move time on for a bit. We should get us some of these offerings up here. I expect to see that number going up. There we go. We've got 36 offerings. Yay! Work passionately, work passionately, work obediently. They're both happy. A Darian is ecstatic. Okay, right. I'm thinking I'm understanding what's going on a little bit better. I think I get what's going on. So we've got 41 out of 60 brewers. That's how many people believe in us. We are a first gathering. So we're not the biggest religion in the world. We're a first gathering. We need to get to 60 to get to level 3. Rewards for level 3 are inspire fanatic grounds. Okay, that sounds crazy. The two miracle, uh, two rituals we can do, sorry, are the holy site centre. So we can do a little bit of sort of uh, worshipping around the fire. Or we can go to the stockpile thing. Miracles, we can do the tavern and we can do the storytelling circle because that's all we've got. Okay, right, I'm following this a little bit better now. Now, can we go on a bit of a, a bit of a journey now? Can we go over maybe to there? Can we go over here and see what happens over here? So conversion rewards, we'll collect 10 brewers. Now, disciple blesses a relic. Two, five, and two, easy. We've got that absolutely in the bag. Let's go over there and convert these heathens, convert these <laughs> incorrect religion folks. So we're going first. So uh, you're going to be reflective like nature. So there you go. You can do a religious nature-y thing. That's nice. Uh, convert, convert, and spell. Right, whack. I'm going to whack you with peace. <laughs> Here we go then. More peace. Some peace fl flung right in your face there. Condemn and doom. Sounds a little bit ominous, doesn't it? Right. Oh, right. Adara just jumped in the way, which is exciting. And I think you guys are going to go down this time. Convert to peace offer and wisdom. Okay, you've been hit. You have gone down. And you know what? Montezuma doesn't even need to do anything. We have won. We have persuaded a pagan weaver. And a Darian's miracle charge. A Darian can do a miracle. This is very good. Okay, let's proceed. Let's go. And we've got ourselves... Yeah, another 10 people. And we've got ourselves uh, a common relic. Okay, so let's embrace those converts. Um, and blessing a common relic. Now, what does this what does this do? Uh, do we want you to do that? 
or do you want you to how about we have montezuma do it because he's in touch with nature so he might bless something like you know a, a tea plant or something i don't know we'll choose you to bless a relic and you're gonna get da, 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 a banana <laughs> That is not what I was expecting. A holy banana, okay? <laughs> don't eat it. Whatever you do, don't eat the holy banana. That would be a sad way around. You can assign this relic to a disciple in your holy city. Okay, right. So he now has a holy banana. Right, okay. <laughs> That's made me chuckle. Summon initiates. Several brewers have travelled to the holy site, eager to become your next disciples. You may summon these initiates and determine who is worthy enough to, come, to become acolytes of lovely tea. Each disciple requires an amount of your worshipper support, so take care when making your selection. Oh, so what's an acolyte? They're disciples. Oh, hang on a minute. Right, this might be a different thing. So now we can... Right, let's do this. Select new initiatives from the faithful pilgrims that present themselves. Hello, what is this? Click to reveal Kuvali from the seas, Papan from the lands, or Kuzazazwa from the bloodline of... Oh, the bloodline of Adarian? Well, that might make sense, mightn't it? Might be related to a Darian. Let's have a look at you. Um, bespectacled bear totem. Uh, you've got abilities and passives. Um, okay. Do I just reveal all? Hang on. Let's just reveal all. I don't know what. I don't really know why I need to reveal those unless it costs me lots. I think it costs me to take them. Does it? Or am I taking all of these people? I'm not entirely sure what I just did there. But okay, right. So we're going to have Quali a parakeet totem, papan a rat totem, and quizwa a bespectacle bear totem. But you seem better. You seem better because you've got some sort of special thing here. Ah, yes. You've got plus 10 faith because you are related to the prophet. Okay, continue. Initiate new disciples. We'll definitely have you. Absolutely we'll have you. You're good. Oh, these people become disciples. Right, I see. So yes, we'll have you because you're good. Um, you're, you've got quite a good a load of might. I don't want you. And Quali is good. Oh, yeah, we might have you, actually. We might have you. So we've got ourselves 18 out of 22 initiation points. That's what those things are. Okay, right. They're worshipper points of some sort. So, yeah, we'll have you as well, I think. We'll have Quali. And you can be ambassador druids and smite swords and all that kind of stuff. Okay, and we won't have you because you're, you're a bit fighty. Yeah, you want to become a rage prophet. That just sounds a bit scary. So, uh, yeah, we won't have you. We won't have you. Goodbye. Cheerio. So now I've got two more people. Oh, my goodness me. Right, what can we do with those? Oh, and in 20 days, we get to bring in some more people who might become disciples. Okie dokie. Right, now we need to perform some rituals. So you go over and do that thing. You go over and... Yeah, you two can go by the fire. Um, you can go over and collect some offerings. Uh, who else is left? Right, you. You've got enough to do a miracle thing. So you can go over... Which one do we want you to do? Increase your charisma. You cannot inspire more than three disciples at once. Oh, bother. Okay. <laughs> I don't think it's going to let me do it. Oh, okay. I didn't realise that was a thing. Okay, never mind. I've got a thing down here as well. Our relics. How do I assign a relic to a person? I want to give someone the most sacred banana. The holy banana. Um, I think Montezuma should have the holy banana. Um, because, you know, it, he's a he's a druidy person. And that would make sense. Relic. Ah, here we go. Yes, we can give you the banana. So, yeah, uh, there you go. Enjoy that holy banana right there. <laughs> okay, so we've moved time on a bit. And now it's time to give Adarian his miracle thingamajig. So let's do this. You can go... Yeah, increase your charisma then, please. You go down here and increase your charisma. In the meantime, do you reckon we can take these guys on a bit of a fight? Because now we can take, obviously, three people to go and have a bit of a... Not a fight, sorry. A, a peaceful debate. <clears throat> and um, then we can leave someone else behind as well. So how about Kipak... We get you to do a thing. So Kipak, yeah, you stay over there and do that because you're next to it anyway. So you get us some more offerings. And then the other three can go out and just have a bit of a fight, can't they? Can they just come out here and just have another bit of a fight with these guys? Oh, oh, you're, you're quite strong. So we'll have a five, a six and a five against your two, five and two. Do you know what? Let's go for it. Let's go for it against those lot. 
So yeah, start that. Let's go and have a little barney with these. Yeah, we're without our general other leader, though. We're without our main leader, but this is fine. They've gone first, though. Oh, be reflective like nature. Yes, go, little defensive nature shield. Right, nervous and nervous. Oh, yes, right. Two of their guys freaked, so they're not doing anything. Right, come on. Nervous, condemn, and spell. Okay, so Kuali's having a little bit of a moment, but that's fine. We'll sort it out. Okay, so we've caused eight damage. Now there you go. Attack force and nervous. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh, five. Ouch. That was a bit of a kick in. Condemn. Oh, now the one in the middle is having a bit of a moment. Come on. More more things. Okay, so we're 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 fine. We're gonna win it, I think. Again, when they keep getting a nervous person. Oh, we've evaded one of their attacks as well. <gasps> and you got in the way. Well done, Cosquartle. Oh, and you freaked out again. We need to get people slightly less nervy, don't we? Well, they've only got five left, though. I think we've got this in the bag. So um, here we go. There's only one turn left, it says, though. We've got to beat them next turn, then. Although we have taken a massive kick in. Right, come on. Nobody be nervous. Right, two attacks. Bosh. And... But Oh. Was it just a draw? Did we just have a draw with them? Okay. Oh, we've persuaded some people. But, more importantly, these people can have classes. Which is very exciting. Okay, now can we proceed? No, we have to pick their classes right now. Okay, let's turn Kuali into a Zealot. A Zealot is a powerful orator who excels at dealing morale damage and does well with critical hits. So why don't we do that? Because your important stats are devotion and charisma. They are two highest stats. It would make sense for you to do that. And it's morale damage is what we're good at anyway. So let's pick that. So we'll go for that for you. And then Coscartle. Uh, what are you good at? You've got quite a lot of health. Health or knowledge. Oh, yes. Right. We want something with health and knowledge. Okay. Also, you do have this thing here as well. You've got a talent of the the spectacled bear totem. Okay. Um, talented attributes will automatically rise whenever the disciple performs a miracle. So, I don't know what that... Oh, they get a defy chance. I don't know what that means. I'm not sure what that means, but never mind. Right. Let's look through what else there is. A weaver. Knowledge and charisma. What does that do? They spread your will through, the, through dreams and visions. They focus on manipulating of the enemy mind. Oh, crikey. Okay, they're casting Doom. That doesn't seem like the kind of the thing we want to go for. They seem a bit fighty. Um, where was the where was the defendy thing? The Guardian. Health and Cunning. Oh, we need to use his knowledge. We need to use his knowledge in some way. I think we're down to two, really. We can either become a Druid, which is Knowledge and Devotion. So we've got devotion of five and a knowledge of eight. That's good. We've got a druid already. Or we could go down this weaver route. So they are a little bit evil, however. Their attacks are, yeah, they'll always cast doom. They've got mind fog, condemn, and nightmares. But maybe, maybe the weaver, if this is what I'm thinking, because we've already got, we've already got a, uh, a druid anyway, and it might make sense to mix things up a bit. The weaver might condemn people to dream about drinking coffee. Maybe that's what they could do. So rather than drinking lovely cups of tea, they could be drinking coffee or, you know, other non-tea drinks. They could be spitting them out going, this is terrible. I was expecting a cup of delicious tea and it's turned out not to be tea and now I am horrified. This truly is a nightmare. So let's pick you as a weaver. A weaver of terrible dreams. There we go. So our two people here. Oh, and they've got miracles charged as well. Oh my goodness me. Okay, so again, there's no converts down from that place. That place doesn't seem to have any converts. Oh, but look, little people are coming in. The wondrous storyteller miracle. A diary told an amazing story of the endless teapots, exploits, and brewers. The story was so well told, it came alive in the very stars above. Ah, that's exciting. A spellbound crowd looked up as the endless teapot did many great things in times long past. A diary enraptured in telling the tale kept their eyes closed. Okay, stories are the wellspring of faith. And a Darwin's going to get ah, a new attack there. Is that what we're going to get? And oh, no, that's the miracle we just did. So it gave us some charisma, some cunning and some knowledge. And we have a new ability, which is unity. Heals all allies <gasps> and boosts their devotion and health. Oh, yes. Scales on devotion. Oh, that's very good indeed. Oh, I'm happy with that. Yes, please. Yeah, we'll t teach passive. What does that mean? Choose a new passive. Oh my goodness, he gets a new passive thing as well. He either gets more devotion or more charisma. Well, that thing there required devotion. So let's go for some devotion as well. Blessed be Adarin, yes. Blessed be unto him. And for some reason, we've come down to look at these trees. Uh, why are we down here? I don't know, but they were lovely trees. 
So our three guys here, so Montezuma, Coscatl, and Kuali, are all now Miracle Charged. So we could give them Miracles, that would give them a boost to their stats, and it would give them some nice new abilities. We've only got 41 offerings right now, so currently we could only do one of them. We could only upgrade one of those. Two of them are a bit injured, they need a bit of a break. And do you know what? I think this is a good point to leave it for now, but we're coming back to this. This is very intriguing indeed. I like this. I like the way it works. I like the way it looks. And yeah, I, I just think it's an interesting concept. And I just want to see where it goes. I want to see where it goes and whether we can get the whole of this world here. Because it's quite big by the look of it. We've got the island we're on, but there's other little islands. Oh my goodness me, there's loads of islands. So I'm wondering if we can get the entire world believing in the ways of tea. Will they all be following the endless teapot and the lovely tea religion? Who knows? But do you know what? We're going to give it a good go. So we shall come back to this most certainly and see if we can spread the word of the tea. But we'll finish up for now. Hopefully you have enjoyed this or found it interesting. If you have, then please do leave a like. That would be splendid. And also, if you are not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here in Godhood. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. They've ripped my arms off, ripped my legs off. I mean, you know, unfortunately they didn't rip anything else off. Yes, I'm off my face on mushrooms. Why, Lady Charlotte, I, uh, I would certainly love to taste your cake. The King of the West is an idiot. I am off my face on mushrooms. I mean, asking me questions isn't going to be my strong point at the minute.